Hey, it's Jay here in hot and humid Florida. Today we're gonna to be building a custom shelf for our new Hands for Hire computer build uh, made by Overkill Computers. The thing turned out amazing and I'm already using it to produce this video. The difference between the laptop I was using before completely frozen and this computer is just night and day. But we're gonna be uh, building a custom shelf to display in my office. I'm just designing it from scratch. I'm gonna put it together and just show you guys how easy it is to build something from a couple pieces of wood, to sand it, to stain it, and then put on the final polyurethane coat. Hopefully if you're building your own furniture, you'll be able to use these techniques to make your furniture look like it's professionally done. <laughs> Since we're building a custom shelf for this computer, the first thing we're gonna do is measure the dimensions of this case. Okay, we've got 23 inches about, a width of about 10 inches, and not that it matters too much, but a height of just over 23 inches. I picked up a couple of select pine boards at Home Depot. When I'm at the store, I always take the boards before I put them on the cart and just look down them and just make sure the wood is not warped. If it is warped, then it's no good. The width of this board is five and a half inches and if you recall, the computer case is 10 inches wide. I think just joining two of these together is gonna be good. That'll give us 11 inches with a half inch clearance on either side. Okay, I've got my T-square here and we're gonna make it 24 inches long. All right, I'm just gonna make sure my board is Perfectly lined up with the line, and it is. Alright, we've got one board, and so we don't have to measure twice, and we get them the same exact length. I'm just gonna take this board, put it right on top. Line them up perfectly. Draw my line across. All right, so the next thing is we're gonna attach these two boards using the biscuit joiner. So I'm gonna line these up. What I'm doing is drawing a line on both sides, on both boards. And that line is gonna be my center guide for the, the biscuit joint I'm about to put in. I'm gonna take my first board, I'm just gonna clamp it down to the bench here. Okay, this is the Ryobi biscuit joiner, and you can see there's a blade right here. And you essentially lay this on the board, and there's a center guide right here on the top, and I'm just lining it up with that line that I made on this board. You hold down with your one arm tight on this grip here. You start the blade up. And you push it in and you've got a perfect cutout. You got two. And here's our final one. Take our clamps off. I don't know if you can see that, but we've got our three biscuit spots now. All right, so I've got number 20 biscuits here. I just need three of these. And all I really do, I take Elmer's wood glue put a little bit, just go along the seam here. Just a thin layer of glue. And just make sure I get it in the biscuit crack. As the glue dries, the biscuit will expand. I just have to line up my pencil marks here. In order to hold it all together, I've got these 12 inch DeWalt clamps. Glue, a lot of times, will sneak out both sides. It'll seep out. And I'll end up just sanding this down after. I'm gonna sand this entire board. So now I'll just go around and wipe any glue that came out. Let's see, 
see how it beat it on this side. And like I said, it's gonna be on the wood, but when we sand this, it's gonna all come off. So we're gonna let this dry for probably 12 hours. And now this is representative of the shelf sitting here with the computer on it. So I'm angling it so that the bottom of this, where it's gonna to attach to the shelf, is right at 11. And then it's gonna shift in probably about an inch um, once I make the cut down here. So I have a second level here. And I'm just, as I hold it in that one spot, I'm leveling it down here. Can we level up there, Lila? Mm -hmm. I'm making the line. And that'll give me the, the angle, the cut I need to attach it to the wall. Set this up now, like so, against the wall. Are we level? No. Perfect, it's right there. All I have to do, take my pencil, and just draw a line where the bottom of this board meets the, this angled post. And you can see I've got my perfect angle now, and that'll keep the shelf nice and level. It's time to sand. All right, today we're gonna to be using 150 grit to start and then we're gonna finish up with 220. We've sanded, now we're almost ready for staining, but before we do that, I wanna drill the three holes in here. These are the holes that are gonna attach the shelf to the windowsill. And I also wanna, I'm gonna inlay the three screw holes so that we can actually put a plug over them. When I put the plug in, I wanna sand the plug down, then I'm gonna pop the plug out, then we'll stain the whole thing, and then we'll pop the plugs back in after it's attached to the windowsill. All right, sanding's done. And before I start staining, I want to get all the dust out of the area, so I'm going to start cleaning. We're just about ready to stain. We've got all our pieces sanded, ready to go. The garage is clean. And what I like to do is just take a wet microfiber cloth and I just wipe down the boards. And get off any excess dust. steps of this project and the ebony stain turned out really nicely. Before we move on to the satin finish, the final coat, what I usually do is use a paper bag, which is like a really fine sandpaper. I just go over the stain and it comes out really smooth afterwards.
this is a product I found that works really well. Wipe on poly finish, satin finish. Basically you just take a rag and wipe it on. If any of you guys have done polyurethane before, usually you take a brush or a foam brush and you have to be very careful and methodical about your brush strokes. With this, you just take a rag and you just go along with the grain and it goes on so easily and the finish is super smooth. It's been a little over four hours since we put on the satin finish. Before we start our second coat, I decided let's just install the shelf and then once it's in place we could do touch ups and then we'll put the second coat on. I'm going to go in at an angle so that I end up not punching through the bottom here. It's already pretty solid before we even put the other supports in. I just drilled holes in here. Uh, this is going to attach into the bottom of the shelf. And I'm just going to countersink it just a little bit and then we'll go back and touch it up after. It would have been nice to have studs in the right places but unfortunately there aren't any. What I'm going to do is put a couple wall anchors in place. Perfect. Perfect. Perfectly level. Føler du deg pøv? Føler du deg slem? Da er det klart at du skal være med hjem. Føler du deg pøv? Føler du deg slem? Let's put on that second coat of satin finish and in 12 hours the computer will be all set up on this thing. I just couldn't be happier with this build and I couldn't be happier with how the shelf turned out. It's small, it's simple, it's compact, it looks nice against the wall, the finish turned out really well, this computer is beautiful, and now it's not on the other side of the desk where I can't see it. I can look over, glance, and just kind of observe this piece of art while I'm working. It's time for It's Just Science, and today we're going to be comparing air cooling versus water cooling. In the computer industry, you see so many YouTube videos comparing air coolers versus liquid coolers. That's not what this video is about. It's actually about the science behind these two different techniques to cool computers. Hands for Hire is a mobile app connecting neighbors ready to lend a hand with neighbors who need a hand. Download now in the App Store or on Google Play. Visit us at handsforhire.com. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel.